Alex Ogden, Handbook Binder here, and today I want to talk to you about what is called a perfect binding. Printing companies will oftentimes uh, print inexpensive books with what they call a perfect binding, but if you know what I'm talking about, you know it's anything but a perfect binding. All in the world it is, is, a, is printing uh, the book on single sheets of paper and then basically putting a glob of glue on the spine to try to hold it all together. It's like taking a stack of, of uh, copy paper, just single sheets of paper, just putting a glob of glue there and uh, hoping it stays together. In some cases it's better than others, but it seems like they all will eventually begin to fall apart. And uh, sometimes, uh, you know, I'm asked to make a binding, maybe that is uh, composed of individual sheets of paper. And so a perfect binding is uh, the only way you can do it because you can't uh, sew through the fold as you would do with a normally sewn book. And so there's a couple of ways to do that. And uh, in that particular case, making a brand new binding of single sheets, we'd put it in a press, all jogged up properly. We'd fan it out thoroughly one way, put glue, We'd fan it, out, fan it out thoroughly the other way, again apply glue, and what this does is get glue down in between every sheet of paper there, just a little bit, enough to give that uh, glue uh, contact with every sheet and it, it adheres and it will hold that binding together much, much better than what is done uh, by a machine. But then when we get books in that have already been bound in that method by perfect binding, and uh, again, they're going to come apart, as in the case of a Bible. I now have a Bible here now that has done that very thing, and, and there are various uh, pages at the end of the book that have come off and just slipped out because it's just a bunch of single sheets of paper with a glob of glue that I've left on there for now. And uh, to redo this with the method that I was just illustrating with the fanning in each direction and putting glue on it, is really not feasible in this particular case because of the amount of work that would be necessary to separate every sheet. Uh, probably the easiest thing would be just to chop off the spine and have a nice fresh cut there uh, to work with. Uh, but again, that's not always a, a good idea, not always uh, the easiest and best way to do it. There's another way, and that's what I'm going to illustrate in this video. And uh, what I need to do, first of all, is to reattach each of these pages or in some cases a small group of pages, I have to begin by reattaching those to the book block. And so I'll put a very small uh, bead of glue, PVA, bookbinders glue, carefully position those pages and uh, put them back in place. That'll hold it together enough that I can then, once it all is put back together as a book block, I can then put it in the press, uh, all squared up. I can remove this glue and then I'm going to put a series of saw cuts across here. I'm going to use my saw and come through here and, and uh, cut just deep enough for some bookbinders thread to be glued into each of those channels. And uh, then thoroughly glued across when I'm done and, and uh, to reinforce that spine just like we would a normal book. And with what hangs out the edge, we'll uh, fan those uh, threads out and glue them down so that they're nice and flat. Uh, but again, the, the, the uh, thread is going to go through all of it, come out the other side, the same treatment over there, and the book is going to be held together a lot better. There's going to be a lot more area for the pages to uh, be uh, picked up by the glue, and so it's going to hold the binding together uh, much, much better. And so that's what we're going to illustrate in this particular video. Uh, I'll come back and show you later. We'll have the pages reattached, and uh, we'll show you later the process of putting those saw curves in. All right, now I have done some work on the book. I want to bring you up today, tell you what I'm going to do next. I've taken the book, the Bible. I actually put it between a couple of old book covers, what I did. Of course, just some binders board would work just well. Jogged it up nice and square, put it in a book press, and I came in with my saw. And uh, any sort of a thin saw that you can make a shallow cut that's not very wide, and I just went down through here, in this particular case, made 10 shallow saw cuts that uh, would allow me to glue in place some uh, book binding thread, some linen thread that would uh, lie in there. I actually put two runs in each, uh, in each uh, uh, cut. As you can see, I have it here. And uh, it's glued into place with plenty of PVA book binding glue. And uh, then the whole, the whole thing glued up. 
Now, what I'll do next, all of these threads that are hanging out, I'll come in and, and trim them uh, uh, short and glue them down nice and flat. And uh, then I'll be able to come in with my Bible in paper sections, which is a sheet of permalife folded in half and uh, Bible in paper, quality Bible in papers with some cam cambric as a as joint material. And once that has been applied on top of the on top of it here, then those threads will be completely buried and hidden away, never to be seen again. But they'll be there doing their job, keeping this book in a lot better uh, uh, shape. The pages will not come out uh, again. And after that, uh, after we've done that, uh, I will put it back in the press and uh, forward the uh, spine just like I normally would. I'll put some uh, wheat paste on here, a very thin layer of wheat paste, and that will soften the PVA glue that's already on there. And I'll use some Japanese paper. This is just a little strip of it, but uh, cut an appropriately shaped uh, and length uh, piece of Japanese paper. And that, with that uh, paste softening the glue that's already there, the fibers of the Japanese paper will interact with the fibers of the paper of the book. And it'll make a nice, strong uh, backing material. And then, of course, we'll put the head and tail bands on there. And ribbons will be as, under, under that. And uh, the uh, super. And then uh, I may actually even put a hollow on this one. But uh, that'll allow me to then put this back in its original case and get it back to Bobby, who's anxious to get it back. And uh, But that's what I do to reinforce an existing perfect bound book, in this case, a Bible, that has begun to fall apart, which they all will do at one point in time or another. And uh, so that's my method for reinforcing it and making it to where it'll last a good long time uh, for the customers. Well, come back. We'll have some more uh, videos at a later time. Uh, we're glad that you stopped by. and Maybe, uh, maybe I was able to be of some help to you in uh, understanding the process of handbook binding.